I'm so pumped because I've talked about you on my social. I call you my pseudo sister. Yeah. Yeah. Which, how do you feel about that name? I love that. Yeah. I feel like you're my pseudo sister. Because I say, I've said little sister at one point and then I've gotten messages People, yeah. being like, wait, I'm really confused. You have another little and sister. where are her freckles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where are your fucking freckles? Yeah. But I say pseudo because you, I feel as if you're my little sister. Yeah. And I don't know if that's because we've just spent our entire lives together <laughs> because our moms are attached to the hip yeah or because you're also my little sister's best friend so that also ties into it yeah i think it's just all of that it's just like we grew up together with family well our families are one yeah they literally are <laughs> and i mean you don't even have a choice of who's gonna officiate your wedding no. at this point no i don't cindy. and i was told that many times <laughs> this weekend <laughs> cindy for context officiated your mom's second wedding yes then, then your my, older sisters, <laughs> then, then your brothers. brothers. It's so ridiculous it's when ridiculous. you say it. Like, what the, yeah. Well, she got ordained because of your mom. And now oh. I think she's done five. I didn't realize she got ordained just because of that. Well, so your mom made a joke one time when they were talking about getting married, her uh -huh. and Rob. And this is what my mom says, so yeah. back check. But my mom claims that Judy made a joke and was like, yeah, wouldn't that be so great if you officiated our wedding? And your mom's like, say less. <laughs> and my mom said, say Dude. less. Yeah. Went on her own, yeah. got ordained, and yeah. then surprised Judy by being like, I'm ordained. I can do this. I'm like, mom, that doesn't mean she necessarily asked you. So it was kind of like a forced situation. Yeah. Yeah. Judy then didn't have a choice. But it that was, was her first one. Yeah. And it was so like intimate and small and amazing it was. and then it just got bigger and bigger, bigger and, and bigger, bigger. And, <laughs> and she and she got better and better she and better. better and she's yeah. good on her feet when someone like your brother doesn't write their vows yes and oh no he wrote them he just did not didn't bring, bring them. them yeah didn't bring them <laughs> that you've seen that video <laughs> of, from no. the day oh my god there's a video of wait, him realizing you, no you have him going walking down the aisle up to cindy waiting for adrian and <laughs> cindy's like where are your vows? You can like see her say that, and he just goes, "I don't know," and she just goes, "I mean, panic," and then she just starts flipping through her book, <laughs> like, and then she starts she would be prepared. No, and then she starts the ceremony. Yeah, and I'm sitting <laughs> next to Cece, my sister, and Cece's like, "This is sounding awfully familiar." Oh yeah, and it was her vows. Her vows. <laughs> yeah. My mom, yeah. we leave. She walks up to me and she goes, oh, my fucking God, Drew didn't bring the veils. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, he just got up to the aisle and told me he did not have his veils. Like, yeah. as we're all exiting yeah. the tower. I'm like, only, only Drew. And only it was Drew. literally fun. Love him to death. Yeah. But, but only Drew. Um, only Drew, yeah. Okay, so context, which yeah. is a lot of what this episode will be about. Totally, yeah. I feel our families are incredibly close because – our parents were mm -hmm. very close and yeah. our moms are inseparable. Like yeah. I joke all the time that they've merged to one human and it's a little terrifying. Yeah, it is. But <laughs> it can be scary. It can be scary. Yeah. And also unclear if like maybe they would end up together if they were both single. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It would be an amazing life. It would. But I also think that trauma brought yeah. our families together. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think that like is specifically our moms. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm happy. To, you can share it. I can share it. But basically, what we're talking about yeah, is 9 11. It, yeah. And I've referenced this in episodes prior when I talk about mm -hmm. emotions I have around childhood and different trauma and how to process trauma that you're involved in, but it's more focused on someone else, which I would actually love to talk to you about. Yeah. I don't think we have. Totally talk but about it. Carly's dad passed in 9 11. Mm -hmm. He was a traitor at Kendra Fitzgerald. Am yes. I correct in saying yeah. that? Um, and. That day obviously rocked the entire world, mm -hmm. but more specifically the families that were directly yeah, impacted, totally. obviously. And I do think that that day changed the trajectory of our families Absolutely. because it was like, <clears throat> we are one Yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, your mom showed up and I'm, I know this from, I mean, I was only four years old. Which is wild when, for me to realize. Think, yeah. I was only four when... 9 11 happened and some of the only memories i have from the day are they're really f like visceral mm -hmm. and like the corduroy of a couch that i was sitting on like watching yeah. the tv kind of thing and your mom mm -hmm. like i remember seeing your mom and my mom and they were like in their tennis outfits or whatever um 
and my mom has said this so many times to me especially as i get older Mm -hmm. and i like can dig deeper into uh you know everything that is judy king (laughs) uh she says that all the time she's like cindy showed up like they weren't as close as they were before 9 yeah. 11 that they were the day after you know what i mean like she showed up for my mom in a way that was so incredible and like important mm-hmm. and i think that that's the kind of person like your mom is and yeah and it's she continues to do it you know and it's just so yeah and it's it's so important that's when you say like pseudo sister pseudo mom like cindy is you know my second mom for yes. sure i mean she it's one of the things i admire the most about my mom is her yeah. ability to just like step up and show up it's crazy and like not take on but yeah. really just like throw herself into a situation mm-hmm. to help in any way she can yeah and i don't think we've ever really unpacked 9-11 the two of us no obviously we've like talk yeah it's a big part of our lives yeah. but i have the most vivid memories of that entire day really because it was my first week at pds yeah so i remember the entire thing i remember right because you weren't at jp anymore no i just switched okay. drew was still at jp right and i remember we were doing this like scavenger hunt at, or we were outside for like a gym class or something it happened mm-hmm. maddie had given her focus speech that morning oh my god the, like Everyone in the high school was speaking on their phone with parents in these glass windows I could see outside because so many people were commuters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just remember we all went into the amphitheater and some kids get started getting picked up early. Yeah. And Mr. Buck came oh. and he was picking up his kids and was like, I'm just going to take the Linville's with me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? Because yeah. also I didn't know what the World Trade Center was. Yeah. If yeah. we're being honest. Like yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. I didn't know that my dad worked in the building next to it. Yeah. No context. And then my mom came downstairs with to the school with Cece in her arms. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? And Whoa. we get in the car. That. We all go to my house. Yeah. You're with me. Yeah. I remember saying to Cece, I think about this vividly often. Like, don't worry. The worst thing that could happen is your dad breaks his arm. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Is it so I weird the know. things that you remember? The things you yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so weird. And, and you're like, that's the worst thing I've ever the known to happen. That so could, that's, like yeah. in my head, that was you're, the worst thing that could happen. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then I remember we're sitting in the sunroom trying to watch TV. Mm-hmm. Drew, maybe you weren't with us, but yeah. Cece was. And we were trying to find something and everything, even MTV, everything was talking about 9-11. Yeah. And I think that was the moment that I still think about now where it's taken on such a universal mm. news moment yeah that footage is so often reshared yeah like how does that make you feel as someone who suffered and experienced so much personal trauma Mm -hmm. in a moment that's now so like put in your face every once in a while totally yeah that make sense totally yeah so that's a great question um me and cc so me and my older sister are 10 years apart uh me and drew are six years apart so I'm the only kid in the family who had to actually learn about 9/11 in school. Oh my god! I like never 9/11 about that. was something that was taught. Yeah, it was you had in to learn about it. Yeah, textbooks. it was in history textbooks, literally. Um, and to have such a close connection with something that was literally everyone had to know about, everyone did know about. It mm-hmm. was a point, like a line in the sand. You know, there's pre 9/11 USA, post 9/11 mm-hmm. USA. Um, and so I think that unfortunately for me, it's just always been a reality. Like I've only known what it's like for, I've only known that sometimes people wake up, go to work and there's a plane that hits their building and they, thousands of people die. Like that to me is my reality. And I think it's taken a lot of therapy and Mm -hmm. time and, um, weed to understand that Hell like yeah. yeah that like everyone calls like you're a victim of 9 11 like the mm-hmm. victims of 9 11 are the families um but for me it's it doesn't even feel necessarily like that because i don't remember before like i don't m- my first memories are of that day so it's hard to conceptualize what 
a life without knowing that you know sometimes you one day you wake up and the world ends Mm -hmm. and that's the biggest disconnect between or not disconnect but difference between my experience yeah and my siblings experience and a lot of kids experience at the time um and because I've had to be in classes where it gets brought up when people say stuff, when, you know, the, the 10 year anniversary was my first day of freshman year and our high school, in high school. In, in high school and PDS had a huge ceremony for it, a huge assembly. They didn't tell me that they were having this That's and up. it was so messed up and I'm sitting next to Lucy, your sister, and all of a sudden it's like, whatever like the meetings like morning meetings yeah, yeah. and it's the whole school and then all of a sudden one of my dad's best friends how he gets up and starts telling this whole story about my dad and i'm in i'm freshman year in front of the whole school and i'm just like wow okay um heads up would have been nice heads up would have been nice but also i'm just like everyone is experiencing something in this room but no one's experiencing what i am um, yeah experiencing and i think that sense of perspective is something that now i hold really you know true and close and i try to have that be the north star like of Mm -hmm. my life of my music is is that perspective does any part of you feel like you haven't had the ability not ability but the space to like grieve in the way you would have wanted to because it's such a universal experience or no yeah because that's so interesting um no i never i would never say i don't have i have so i'm so privileged and have like so many tools and outlets and um people and friends Mm -hmm. and family that support me i don't think that i'm missing out on any sort of space or experience to grieve i think i'm like very good at grieving (laughs) because it's pretty much second nature at this point um but what's but i think the craziest thing is I've grown up with the grief and it's changed as I've grown and you know a lot of it in high school and like early in college it was a lot of anger Mm -hmm. that I couldn't you know it felt like I was grieving something that I almost wasn't even I didn't even get the chance to experience Experience. like it's like I'm grieving the loss of my father who's someone I don't really even remember getting to hang out with or spend time Mm -hmm. with um so that's the only thing I think I've missed out on is obviously like time with time with him um, do you have memories of him? I do, but like, kind of like I was saying before, they're all really visceral. So it's all like physical. Like I just remember him being massive. And <laughs> he was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like a big dude. And um, I remember his like smell. And um, the only memory I really have of him is like he was just like shaving, and I look, I was like looking up at him, and then he just just boo, <laughs> and he like had like shaving cream on him. Um, but it's people like your dad and and you your family, his family, my family that are able to, and his friends that are able to just keep his memory so mm-hmm. alive. The yeah. best compliment I've ever gotten was by one of his friends and we were skiing and we were in the gondola and I was, we were just like joking around, big powder day, everyone's like so excited. Big powder day. Big powder day, everyone's so control. excited. And <laughs> he just looks at me, he's like, God, you're Andrew King in and drag. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, thank you just crying i was like thank you so much no but i agree <laughs> you know you know what i mean and that's like the best compliment someone someone could give me which is ridiculous but uh but yeah but the craziest thing about the grief and i think my experience in my story and my perspective is i people put things on me mm-hmm. the second someone finds out that my dad died 9-11 it's like they feel connected to me in a way that I could never have gotten there with them in 30 seconds. You know what Do I mean? Do you feel like that's a positive or a negative? I think it's a positive thing. And I think that maybe because I'm also really willing to share mm-hmm. and open up about it because it feels less of my own personal experience where I know with my sister and my brother – their grief is very personal i think that's what i meant in my question of like have you had this space to grieve yeah because maybe i'm coming at it from someone who was older yeah so i'm envisioning if it had been a role reverse just because i even feel when 9-11 gets brought up everyone likes to 
share the story about oh i know where the I person, was, where who, the person yeah. who did this i mean i simply just did it with you yeah yeah like that's a very universal experience mm-hmm. i don't know why we all do that but we do and i yeah. think maybe we want to connect we want to totally. share experience etc totally. but i think about it a lot when that happens sometimes of being like there's always layers of how you were impacted. Yeah. You know, maybe you were in California and you saw it on the news yeah. and you don't know anyone. Yeah. And then if you're on the East Coast. Totally. And then if you're in the tri-state area. And then yeah. if your parents are working in the city. Yeah. And then it gets closer and closer mm-hmm. and closer. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. And so I think I felt very close to it because my dad was in the next building. Yeah. We didn't know what was happening. I vividly remember when he eventually got home that day and with you all. But I think about it, if I had been the one to lose a parent, I would almost feel like let me have this fucking experience totally. because it, I've been there. You know I've what I mean? I've definitely been there. Um, especially in school. Like I just remember in high school and college when <clears throat> we started having to talk about it more, you know, I'm writing like I was an English major. So it was like having to talk about it as like an intellectual That's is wild. so intense mm-hmm. and trying to just like compartmentalize my mom's favorite word. Um, <laughs> I can't say that word, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know about that word, um, but yeah, I, I think that. I think that with all of the documentaries mm-hmm. and social, and now as I get older, I don't feel as um, like it's mine, yeah, necessarily. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't really. That doesn't really bother me. I. Like you're just saying, everyone, when they talk about it, oh, where were you? I was here. Everyone knows where they were when they found out that, Mm -hmm. you know, the plane hit. And I think that's just human nature of wanting to be a part of something bigger. And, like, if I can, if not that I would say, like, I feel lucky because that's obviously not the right word. But it is a unique privilege to be so connected to the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you connected with other yeah. children? Yeah, one of the most incredible experiences, honestly, like of my life so far has been the connections made from 9-11. One of them specifically, my friend Sierra is, um, we played club lacrosse together at DU, University of Denver, go Pios. And um, <laughs> she, we were just playing lacrosse one day She's like, oh, yeah, from the East Coast. Oh, yeah, I'm from the East Coast, blah, blah, blah. She's a couple years older than me. And then I forget exactly how it came up. And then all of a sudden, she was like, yeah, my dad died in 9-11. I was like, did your whole body go oh, still? I think I literally, like, I was like, what's out of a body experience? Yeah. And I was like, my dad died in 9-11. And never do you have that experience. No. You know what I mean? So, and she's like, yeah, he worked for Canner. They worked on the same floor. Shut up. They literally, like, definitely knew each other. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's so crazy. And so she is this amazing skier. um, And she's dealt with uh, so much just, like, you know, grief. And her she has a big family. And they've all, you know, dealt with the loss of their father in their own way. And she just came out with this film called Bloom. And it's just all about how skiing is like her happy place and that doing being physical and being in nature is the best therapy for her and her family Mm -hmm. and the way she connects with her dad because her dad loved to ski and my dad loved to ski too. So we always love to say that, you know, they're somewhere skiing together. Um, And she just came out with this film called Bloom and she was able to license like one of my songs to be in it. So it was just like this full circle moment of like, connection and and loss and i think one of my favorite things to say and what i think about a lot is you know life which is to say death like if you're gonna talk about life and the life you want to live and the life that you're living it's also to say like one day you're gonna die yeah and if you're gonna talk about death like that means someone died that means they lived like Mm -hmm. that's amazing um so yeah, a lot of crazy connections. I could go on and on. I feel and like on. Drew had one of these too. I remember vividly someone Drew, yeah, in college. Ho- yeah, yeah, totally. Or at Salisbury, I forget. Yeah, in somewhere. Col- yeah, one of his friends, like brothers. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. There was Love. something wild. Yeah, there. Mm-hmm. it was crazy. Yeah. But there's a lot of connections like that. I mean, even just a couple months ago, I was sitting at um, before I moved back to Wyoming. I was I was there just like 
trying to find housing and I had some work to do so I was like I'm gonna go to the Four Seasons and post up as, as, one, does. as one does when they you know don't know anywhere else to go and I'm sitting there and I'm working and I like got a glass of wine and I'm just kind of like on this call and someone next to me could tell that I was on a zoom call but they couldn't see I was drinking but I was drinking yeah and then it ends and she's like probably like 50 and she's looking at me she's like that was amazing like that was so funny like can't believe you're working right now and like have a drink in front of you and they had no idea I was like yeah like haha whatever and then we get to talking she's a pilot and her husband died 9-11 what and so we just start getting into this like crazy conversation she starts crying she literally like starts calling her friends one of her friends knew my dad like it was see that's the universe no you can't it's just make that shit it's up. so crazy and like I'm not like some I'm not totally woo woo but i've definitely it's hard not to be i mean we have our woo woo side hello yeah (laughs) cricket (laughs) yeah and i've heard you talk about cricket on here and yeah i mean i think that it's just and one of the songs actually on my ep which i haven't really brought up but whatever um, we're gonna get into it yeah yeah i don't know how this works but um (laughs) (laughs) i don't know how this does work but it's called end of the world because people always say you know it's not the end of the world Hmm. it's not the end of the world and I just disagree I think sometimes it is the end of the world and that doesn't mean that you're gonna wake up the next day and it's everything's gonna be fine but sometimes like the world feels like it's ending and it's Mm -hmm. okay to just like embrace that and take it for what it is like I just I don't have memories from the day of like oh I remember you know I couldn't say, you know, I remember exactly where I was when mm-hmm. I found out, but I do have memories of, of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you're so young. So young. And it's so crazy to think of the impact that it's had, especially with when I see so, like little kids and I'm just like, yeah, I can't I even that. imagine. Um, I almost doubt my memories when I see someone at the age of four. I'm like, how is it possible that I have these memories still um, and that I still ha- like think about them often? But I do. And, you know, I think it'll also be a very interesting and eye opening and wonderful, hopefully, experience yeah. for you if you choose to have kids. Yeah. Um, because you will experience the feelings that your dad inevitably felt about you yeah this is making me emotional just because of how I feel about my kids yeah and like I have really intrusive fucked up thoughts but like every once in a while I will have this overwhelming fear of like what if something happens to me he will Mm. not remember me and so that because it's true like they're so little they're not going to remember at this age they won't at four they will have some memories but like you've said your your life kind of started in that moment Mm -hmm. and I think having kids will be a really hopefully healing experience for you to feel the things that your dad felt about you because it'll make it almost even more real in the love that he had yeah and I hope that and I I feel that that's how my brother will feel because he's about to have a kid and um I feel like they're it's gonna bring up a lot and yeah, I think it's well. gonna be really good but it's also you know it's, it's gonna be hard it's gonna be hard but it's gonna be amazing and that's when I really believe in like nature over nurture mm. because there's so many things that I've been told by people who knew my dad so well I mean like, you are your dad yeah that I just couldn't have I could not have just like learned in four mm-hmm. years you know when I see Drew now your older brother yeah who's like my yeah brother best friend yeah. husband at one point we got married on the beach um <laughs> and then I flush it right down the toilet because he pissed me off oh um, the drama the drama the drama I forget what he did we're, but <laughs> when I see him now yeah and I think my dad has the same experience where it's like trippy yeah oh yeah because I'm like every memory I have of Andrew yeah is watch it is now like morphed morphed to, yeah. into observing drew totally and i feel the same way about you where yeah. like you have such similar mannerisms as he did yeah. from my memories of yeah. him so it's wild Which is great. i'm Thank curious <laughs> obviously, of course. <laughs> obviously i don't envision a lot of my listeners having the same experience in the way that they lost a parent mm-hmm. but i think a lot of listeners have lost oh yeah. parents so what has helped you with the grief over the years in like working through it 
totally the biggest thing is having an outlet for me um and that's my music that's been the most therapeutic cathartic um way to you know translate how i'm my life Mm -hmm. and i think just having an outlet whether it be writing or if you're a musician if you're playing music or if you're just able to talk to people who have gone through similar experiences Mm -hmm. something that's helped me so much is having those connections like having friends who have lost their parents being able to talk about it finding that common ground that's the biggest thing that's that's helped and even if you're not a musician i think music in general like i really do think everyone i've spoken to and unfortunately i've lost a lot of people um in my life and it's connected me to even more people and that and there's always music like Mm -hmm. that's been therapeutic you know i lost one of my really good friends and just like listening to james taylor is all I need to do or even just listening he like loved Mac Miller and still listening to Mac Miller like I just feel like music is so incredibly important when it comes to connecting and especially grieving and Mm -hmm. loss and I think there's a lot to be lots to be said there I mean we talk about visceral memories I think music brings up such visceral emotions oh yeah of experiences whether it be happy or sad like there could be a random kesha song that plays and i'm like oh i'm in college oh yeah this exact (laughs) yeah totally (laughs) it is triggered to the point and i feel the same way about there was a song that we played at my papa's funeral and every time i hear it i'm like Mm -hmm. this is purposeful yeah there is a reason for this like i deeply believe in that yeah whole thing let's talk about music let's talk about music what okay this is more of a personal thing yeah yeah. because i feel like you have you ever had a musician on the podcast no but go you (laughs) yeah first time but i am like trying to figure out when did you start when was like like a thing because i do remember yeah one time being home i don't know what year this was (laughs) pre-covid and my mom's like carly's gonna play at a and b and i'm like play what and she's like music (laughs) and i'm like what the fuck are you talking about yeah yeah and she's like yeah she's like gonna start like she started writing songs and i'm like carly knows how to sing (laughs) And I'm not going to lie, I kind of yeah. showed up being like, what are we about to hear? Yeah. Because I'd never heard you sing yeah. growing up. No. It like, was it's definitely like a personal, choir. It was, no. Or any of those things, which like, well, I was in I theater, was, which is a joke. I, I was in theater. Um, okay, well, I guess I actually wasn't even in school. No, you we so were not. Know that. <laughs> we were not in high school. But, um, but no, like, I, you weren't like the star <laughs> of the eighth grade musical. No. So that's what I I'm don't saying. even think I showed up to my own eighth grade musical. <laughs> I was a, we were Fiddler on the Roof, and I was cast as a, drunk man in the bar scene and it was one scene <laughs> that's like i was a man so dancing off brand. in the back <laughs> but everything about that i know um, but i remember just being like huh and then when you yeah. played, i was like wait what is it happening carly's yeah. good yeah so it's so funny and this is why i think like anyone listening to this it's like your outlet doesn't have to be something that one you share with anybody mm-hmm. because i definitely didn't share like my music or my want to play music for so long my stepdad so my mom obviously got remarried (laughs) your mom officiated the wedding (laughs) and cindy officiated the wedding my stepdad moved in um my my mom and me and my stepdad and like our whole family's merged moved into this amazing house and he had a study like an office right under my room and because i'm the youngest and his kids were living with his mom during the week and my their mom not his mom oh yeah sorry his mom <laughs> their, their mom. mom and <laughs> drew and my sister were um in college and at boarding school <clears throat> i was essentially the only kid living in the house you were an only and child I with was siblings an, i was the only child with siblings and my stepdad's also an insomniac so he, is? he yeah he doesn't sleep doesn't sleep probably sleeps three hours a day what the fuck yeah Okay, just looning rub. We'll, we'll, put that, we'll put that in the <laughs> put that in the sidebar. Um, and he would play the guitar at night, and I'd get so annoyed <laughs> because I'd be upstairs trying to go to bed, and I used to hear <laughs> like his foot tapping, and I'd go to my mom's room. I hate living with him. Sucks. Go downstairs. Tell him to shut up. 
she would wake up go downstairs and then <clears throat> this is also the time that youtube was really becoming like prevalent in yeah. like everyone's lives and so he would go to work he commuted into the city and i would get home around like three from school and i would go on youtube in his office like on his computer and then i started seeing like youtube like how to play the guitar and i was like well i have a guitar right here and i was kind of doing it to be like i'm gonna touch his guitars and like yeah like be a little I'm shit fuck this guy. yeah <laughs> like fuck this dude I'm, it was almost like in spite and then i started playing and it's so funny because i could just envision rob like hey. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> him just being like totally <laughs> and um i just started playing I had this one specific instructor on YouTube that ha would come up with a video every week mm -hmm. and I just became obsessed. Like I just loved it. And then I started kind of just naturally just like writing my own songs. And then one day Rob was, my stepdad was playing music and I went in and I was like, can I try? <laughs> he's like, yeah, sure. And I started playing a little bit and he's like, what the heck? Like, you know how to play the guitar like and I knew like two chords but he was like kind of impressed and then it became this way not only um like a bridge I think in our relationship mm -hmm. but a outlet for me and I started writing more and then it just became something where I could grab a guitar go into my room and just kind of like let things out experiment write say things sing try and sing definitely was a horrible singer when i first started playing the guitar but like how do you and turn into a good singer because you're just, really it's good just, it's just practice i don't agree it if is. i practiced i would not be a good singer i probably. think that <laughs> no i'm sorry i refuse to believe i that. think that for a while it was like i only sang my songs well because it was okay. like i felt like i had something to say and it was they were mine and i could only say them in a certain way and then i started um playing with in high school we went to i was on, in theater and they we did like an adaption of a shakespeare play and <laughs> i was like what if i took all the sonnets and wrote them in like a contemporary way so me and one of my, nick jagel who was in uh in the play we started writing these sonnets in like different ways came up with this whole score and then it got picked up and we got to go to fringe and so we went oh, I to didn't know any of yeah this. so we went to fringe in edinburgh my my senior year like going into my senior year and that's when i was like oh like i actually i'm, good at this. I'm kind of good at this like there's people like we would busk people are giving us money and like we had these shows people were buying tickets to like i was like wow this is super cool and that's when i started um thinking about doing it in college and the problem was i had no actual <laughs> Training. Like, training <laughs> didn't know theory didn't know anything um but i was like i'm writing songs and they're good people like them um the people i show them to like them at least and yeah and then it just became something that i like just really liked the people who were interested wanted to play with me and i just felt really good performing um when i went to college i didn't they were like we'll let you be a mine like a jazz guitar minor even though you have literally no experience but <laughs> we heard one of your songs and i like won some competition in bucks county like singer songwriter competition like I'm my learning singer so YouTube. much about you. yeah 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 and uh yeah and then i got to college and they were like we'll give it a week and if you can do it like we'll let you stay in the program and i my first week it was like i got to this music class and everyone's so good and like knows how to read music and i'm <laughs> so far behind everyone else that i had to go to like tutoring twice a week with the guitar professor and he just was like yeah it's fine we'll just do this so um yeah that's kind of i guess started playing when i was probably like i picked up a guitar when i was 12. Like, yeah i mean it's just crazy but i didn't start performing till i was like 17. so i think there yeah. are so many little tidbits in this because yeah. one you can't d ignore this full circle ish moment oh of you can't you working through trauma yeah. of losing your father through music originally in spite of yeah your new stepdad yeah but then at that becomes the connector for the totally. two of you yeah that is something it's, in and of itself it that's is. incredible yeah it is and i i have really spent the last two years three years since coming out since becoming i guess a recording artist mm -hmm. which i still feel so uncomfortable saying why um i don't oh, know shit. <laughs> i listen to your music all the time good i'm so happy but it just feels like so weird to say that but like since actually 
becoming a recording artist i um quit with the quotation marks yeah okay i was like really trying to hold my fingers <laughs> um i've really l- leaned into that and owned that because mm-hmm. that is the reality and that's what's happened and that's you know that's my experience it's beautiful and it's beautiful and it's it's really special and it's not like what was happening i'm thinking this if right. anything i there was a long time where i was really really pissed that I loved music so much because you shared it with your because stepdad? I shared it with my stepdad mm-hmm. and it felt like if it wasn't for him if it wasn't for losing my dad if it wasn't for him being in my life I wouldn't I, I, I wouldn't have it I totally think I would feel the same way yeah but I also think there's the other lens which I think you now look through yeah. of this is your dad giving you totally this gift mm-hmm. like this all didn't happen for a reason Mm -mm. but somehow it all makes sense totally yeah and i going back to music playing this intense vehicle of connection Mm -hmm. and all of those things i remember not that time at a and b but when because i don't think you were playing your own music no yeah i definitely wasn't i was playing like covers fever yeah (laughs) Dead. Dead. But I remember <laughs> Q fever at um, the what is the name of the bar? In oh, the bar. oh, Hillbilly Hall at Hillbilly Hall. Yes, when you were playing mm-hmm. your that own was, stuff. Yeah, and I'm dancing with Lucy. Yeah, on the dance floor, just crying. Yeah, you were <laughs> crying. Could not keep my shit shit together. Yeah, I'm a very emotional person in my older age. Like I cry way more than I ever did. In it's my, so crazy it's to weird. see. Weird. I know. So crazy it's really to weird. See. But it's, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Very odd for you to witness <laughs> my like work through the oh lens God, of knowing it. me. I've when always I was been so interested. In but it, though, anyway, that moment just. It was this flood of emotions Mm -hmm. for me that I think so many people experience when they listen to music because it connects them in some deeper feeling that maybe they haven't addressed. Like, I'm not often thinking about the impact 9-11 had on you. But in that moment, it was this flood of emotions Mm -hmm. because it all hit me. Yeah. So let's talk about your music. Yeah. I love all your songs, of course. Mountains Alone, Jam 2, all the time. Yes. All the time. Shake yes. My Tree. Shake My Tree's great. Big fan. Yeah. But your latest track, yeah. When I Tell You. Oh, my God. Talk about stop. tears. Stop. No. My family <laughs> chat. I mean, Lucy's <laughs> pictures. I'm Lucy's sure she's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of selfies that day of just. Lucy was just. Well, I mean, we were all crying, but Lucy was like <laughs> unwell. <laughs> Because I think she's been the most connected with totally. you through this experience. Yeah. Obviously, you guys were the same age, and mm-hmm. it affected you in different ways, yeah. 9-11. Um, but I would love to hear more about how the creative that went into writing this song, because totally. it's so beautiful. Yeah, Trust Me Honey is, um, yeah, it's it's a track for sure. And <laughs> I wrote it li- literally probably like this week last year. Um, and I've, I had this experience and I've talked about it before, but I've had this experience. Um, yoga was huge. I mean, my mom, and that's another thing. Yoga was huge yeah. for our parents after post they started, they post started. So they, my mom took her first yoga class like two weeks before nine 11, which is so crazy to think about. That is um, crazy. and then it became, you know, Cindy and my mom doing yoga privately with Laura all the time, all the time. Um, <laughs> yeah. And just becoming insanely good at insanely yoga. good but like also <laughs> answering phone calls in the middle of yoga like, yeah hey, i'm in yoga what's up that to me that's was like not, not weird allowed. until i became an adult <laughs> yeah. and started going to yoga classes and i was like why the fuck were you answering my yeah, calls like, in you yoga do that <laughs> um and so yeah and i was in a yoga class and i i used to get really really stoned and go to yoga in in college i've never done that and i think i should you sh- definitely should i love it um and i'm just in shavasana and like I just kind of like closed my eyes and I was just by Stony Brook Creek, right like the bridge right before you could go to JP. Yeah. And and my dad used to fish there and I only know that because specifically because Alex Powers used one of my dad's really good friends used to say I just always remembered seeing his car there and then l- being able to look down at the creek and I s- would see you with him and he would just be fly fishing and you'd just be at the creek. So that's, you know, informed. Mm-hmm. But then I'm I'm laying down in Shavasana and I'm there, like I'm literally a kid and I see him, he's fishing and it was so real. Like it 
to me it is the last time I saw him was that That's moment. So wild. It was so real and then you know and it was kind of like for a while I was in it's like in this space for like five minutes and then I get up and I just remember driving home from yoga being like why didn't he say anything to me? Like why didn't I say anything to him? Why didn't he like look at me? Because he didn't really look at me it was just like me looking at him and I was like what the f- fuck is wrong with me (laughs) why wouldn't he say anything to me what would he said if he said anything am i just not even able to think about what he could say like am i not even able to to go there um and it was really hard like it was really it became a really hard thing to think about you know because i always am like i wonder what he would say i wonder what his advice would be i wonder what he would think of my life that Mm -hmm. is so um absolutely nothing he could have probably imagined (laughs) and then and I've thought about and that was like six years ago and I've thought about that I think about it all the time and then last year I was just in my room and I started playing those chords and I heard someone say that week the youth is wasted on the young and tasteless and I was just like yeah ain't that the truth it's just very true (laughs) it's so true and so I just started kind of trying to sing along with that and then I came up with this idea for the verses to be me telling him like filling him in on everything that's going on and the chorus being what he would say to me um and yeah and there's I mean one of my favorite lines in that is um I'm a curse to my family I'm a lifeboat I'm a banshee and a banshee is I didn't even know what a banshee was when I wrote that I was just like <laughs> that sounds sick like I know it's a thing I, don't I thought even, it was I something it was I thought it was thing. something that had to do with like a sailboat I don't even know and then I looked it up and a banshee is actually like a mythical creature that sings to like bring back the dead interesting essentially um why do you think you're a curse to your family are you the curse yeah I used to think I was a curse why there was a point in my life where a lot of people around me's dads were dying yeah and it felt really personal <laughs> <laughs> no i mean it felt just like we lost a lot of dads in our yeah town. yeah and it just felt like it just felt like like i said because it's all i've known yeah sometimes it feels like oh is is it me you know am i the problem am i the problem but like you realize that's not possible no i know yeah yeah Yeah, we'll reiterate that for sure yeah but i think the contrast of like being a curse and a lifeboat is is uh something i can relate to of feeling like you're the problem but also the solution constantly all the time Mm -hmm. (laughs) which i feel like i totally get from you all the time i feel that way yeah a lot with my family yeah (laughs) totally like i'm the problem yeah everyone comes to me for the solution (laughs) yeah so like how what which is interesting because you're the youngest that's a very middle child feeling i think totally yeah because like most of the time i am the problem yeah but i also am the one that they're like how do we fix this totally (laughs) so it's like i think you just remove me from the equation yeah um Okay, because I was wondering that when I, I mean, I love the song, I've listened to it so many times, yeah, but oh, I've it. always wondered, I'm like, why would Carly feel like, yeah, and it's one of those things that I think, like, it's a, a real feeling I've had, I don't feel it, like, <laughs> like, it's not my truth, yeah, but um, I think when it comes to songwriting, it's, I, when I said it, I felt that I think a lot of people could relate to it, yeah, and I also think that it's the first line of the song mm-hmm. and that's always super important to make sure that's like I want people to as much it's as the hook yeah as much as it's an outlet for me and I don't do it for anyone else I want people to listen but I also think so many people that is a shared experience so yeah. many people do I mean look Taylor Swift hi yeah. it's me I'm the problem it's me. yeah yeah like yeah, we yeah. all <laughs> think we're the problem <laughs> totally. yeah um so it is a shared experience yeah So you have an EP coming out, which I did have to Google what an EP is. Okay, yes, which I was like (laughs) talking to my manager about this. I was like, you know, she definitely doesn't know anything about music. music. (laughs) Cammy doesn't know anything about music, but I think that's like the perfect thing because I honestly am learning everything as well. Um, But essentially an EP is an extended play. So it's like less than 25 minutes of tracks, more than a single. That's how you can kind of think about it. And all you've released singles up until this point. I've only released singles. I have three singles out. 
Mountains Alone, Shake My Tree, and Trust Me Honey. Trust Me Honey, I released last month, and it is the like headlining track to the EP. So Got it's it. on the EP. So okay. there will be an additional three songs that come out February 20th. And um, yeah, and the whole idea of it and why Trust Me Honey is like the North Star is because that song is, you know, like the hook is trust me honey i'm gone and i just feel like i my life is always just i'm kind of always going from one place to another mm-hmm. like i'm always you got to trust me but i'm gonna go you know yep that's like i mean that's your family yeah that's my family it's like you're you gonna can tr- never hold them down no 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 i know you love me yeah. i know i'll see you another time but yeah. god knows when I'll yeah be <laughs> Who the fuck knows? Literally, like, it could be tomorrow, it could be years. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like that is just my life. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm always going from one point to another. So that's kind of why the EP is called From A to B. And each song is very extremely personal. But asking the audience to kind of go with me somewhere. So in in Trust Me Honey, it's a creek. You know, um, one of the lines I I have in in Trust Me Honey is, like, um, on a stairway to heaven it's a creek down in hell where we met and that's also I feel like kind of my life like I'm I'm just trying to get mm-hmm. to be with all these people at that no, I mean not like actively but by every day living my life we're all headed the same direction um so I think like I'm trying to take people on a journey um so each song kind of asks them to go with me somewhere I'm so excited yeah me too what do you wish your dad like knew about you now oh that's a big question (laughs) you can take your time um that i was happy yeah yeah i definitely want him to know i was happy and that everything it's all for him like Mm -hmm. all the music all it's all like I, i think about him every day and i think about him especially when I'm playing music. So I definitely want him to know that. And I think he would just love the music. I think he'd be so proud. <laughs> also, just of the three of you, oh. you're such creative. So creative. The fact that none of you have really worked like a corporate yeah, life. Well, I have, but yeah. Okay, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. not, you're all just so creative in your own way totally. and have somehow made this it work. Yeah. life out of it. Yeah. And it's amazing. And it just goes to show you, like, you can do whatever you want. Like, yeah. When I released, so I released Mountains Alone three years ago during the pandemic. It was my senior project. I never thought I was going to release that song. It was literally my senior project in college. And then I moved out to Wyoming. I'm a snowboard instructor. I'm gigging around a lot. Um, COVID happens. People are like, can you send me that song that you wrote, Mountains Alone? Can you send me that song? So I just started sending, like, voice memos of it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I actually have a really, like, very professional recording of it and so then I, and then i was like what's it what how do you how do you get on spotify how do you get on spotify that'd be easier and then it got on spotify and then it was just like yeah and then it was just crazy i mean it, it you know now it has like over like two million streams it's listened to by you know hundreds of thousands of people and it's crazy like isn't that such a wild feeling it's so crazy and i feel like you can relate to that of just like having an influence having an impact on people it's weird and it's come to terms with yeah it's really weird and but it feels so in a way like second nature to me because i've always felt so connected to people Mm -hmm. um so to have that my music be like a conduit is really cool um i'm so proud of you so I, we are. I'm gonna have you play, of course. Yeah. yeah I mean, you brought your guitar. Yeah, yeah. Like we yeah, have to. But before, because we can close out with that. Yeah. Perfect. Where is the best place for people to support you? Yes. Okay. Best place is Spotify. Listening to my music on Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you listen to music, you can find me, Carly King. Um, and then, yeah. I mean, is it a, a shame to say Instagram? Absolutely not. Yeah. Please. I mean, <laughs> like I'm talking the, Yeah. Instagram for sure. Carly King bada bing. That's uh that's my Instagram handle. A lot of people Which call me Which used to be Bing. your like secret 
Instagram with all of your joints. Carbs yeah. and bada bing used to. <laughs> Wasn't it? Like originally your. Yeah. Yeah. That was. What's it called? That was what my Finsta. 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 Yeah. And I then, just remember finding it and being like, what is Carly <laughs> doing? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. 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 It was. Get it, your sister. Yeah. I drew definitely did not know about that. Um, But yeah, it was. It was. Now we just don't give a shit. And yeah. So it's. I mean. The Finsta is the. It's adulthood. It's adulthood. Yeah. Absolutely. But. All right. Grab your guitar, cool. girly. Okay. My mom's gonna die. Your mom being like, I've gotten really good Wait. wheels on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna I was like, ask if you've played with her. Okay, I will say. I have say, played though, with her though before. I will say, I'm actually really, really impressed by my mom. The fact that she like oh, taught herself how to play I mean, with fucking guitar. It's amazing. Just because she wants to be the grandma that plays the guitar. No, but that's the cutest grandma. But that's, to that's be. who she is. That's the cutest grandma. I know. To be. But she, she is good. But yes, my overstimulation, it's not ideal in the house. Okay. What are um, you going to play? Okay, well, should I play a song that you've never heard before? Oh, God. Or should I play Trust Me, Honey? Um, what do you I don't know because I love Trust Me, Honey so much. Yeah. But like, I, sw- I need to figure out where I saw you play Trust Me, Honey. No, you didn't no, hear it. Carly. I knew the bro- words when you when I heard it for the first time. I sang along. So tell me how that's possible. I played it on Instagram. No, I, I don't. I love you to death. I don't actively watch your Instagram. I don't watch people's Instagrams. How that's probably did I really know good for you. the words? I don't. I swear you to you, I saw you play it somewhere. Did you never play it at Hillbilly Hall? Did I? I feel like I hadn't written it then. No, I, I think you did because I think that was one of the reasons I was hysterically crying. No, I swear to Cammy, you've okay. never heard it. Well, you know what? It came through me because I somehow was singing with you when I listened to it. All right. Okay, what should, should I play it? I think you should play Trust Me. Honey. Yeah, so do I. Because um, I don't think I can debut some of my other songs no, on I there. Think that's like wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of wrong. I'm a curse to my family, I'm a lifeboat, I'm a banshee. Youngest three, five if you count the stairs. On a stairway to heaven, it's a creek downhill where we met. You said words I'll never forget. You said the youth is wasted on the young and tasteless And no one's gonna remember what you said And the old feel whole But they don't know what they want Until they're dead And regret lives on Trust me, honey, I'm gone And regret lives on Trust me, honey, I'm gone I'm a it's kind of nerve wracking in here. <laughs> I'm recording you also, but I'm just like in awe. I'd offer to sing along, but I think I'd ruin it. I'm a hell raising, heaven sent down the fiend. I'm a free spirit, overpriced glass of wine on a plane ride to his family side. It's the first time. And the youth is wasted on the young and tasteless, and no one's gonna remember what you said. And the old feel whole, but they don't know what they want until they're dead. And regret lives on. Trust me, honey, I'm gone, and regret lives on. Trust me, honey, I'm gone. I was mabbing along. That's I mean, fun. you're so good. Oh, thanks. It's crazy. Thanks. Well, I love you uh, so much. Yeah, this was so fun. This Thank was you so, so fun. Thank you so much for having me. Download the EP, everyone. Download the EP. It comes out February 20th. It'll all be linked um, in the show notes. All be linked in the show notes. <laughs> and yeah, come find me. Love you. Love you. <laughs>